Okay, everybody, let's get started. Tonight, we have another express destination. Tonight, we're going to be going to Germany. So I'm going to get our slide started. And if you're joining in progress, or if you've missed it tonight altogether, there's going to be a recording of tonight's presentation put on my website and social media channels. So you can tune in with that and send it around to anybody who might be interested. But let's get started because the concept of an express escape is that it's travel information dispensed to you in 30 minutes. I'm looking to give you 30 minutes of travel information that you can use if you're planning a trip to the destination. So tonight we're gonna to look at Germany and like what you might wanna do when you're over there. If there's any key festivals, certainly Germany has a lot of that key institutions, key regions. Basically, I'm here to break it down for you folks. So my name is Destination Whatever, and tonight I'm presenting Germany. And that's a picture of me the very first time I set foot on German soil. It was down in the Black Forest, and I happened to have been over in France. I was in the French region of Alsace and took a rental car on a car ferry across the Rhine and into um, the Black Forest. So for those of you that are new to me or those of you that have heard me a hundred times before, you'll get to hear me again, but at least you can see a picture of me on the Autobahn in an Audi TT. I won't even tell you how fast I was going in case my mother is listening to tonight's presentation. But my name is Dave Wentworth and I go by the name Destination Whatever. And what I um, aim to do is give small uh, group education. I aim to, sorry, small group education, my goodness. I aim to give travel education and I try to connect people um, with small group trips, uh, expedition trips, which could entail um, sailing to some unusual waterways or polar regions. We'll actually be looking at an expedition to rip tonight that goes to some areas of Germany. We'll, I can look at river and ocean cruising and specifically river cruising. That's going to take us into Germany tonight. Adventures for all. I always like to say that an adventure is what you make of it. And maybe your adventure could be like doing something crazy, um, maybe like going up a mountaintop, but maybe your adventure is something a lot more down to earth. Maybe it's doing a um, tour of, I don't know, Christmas markets, or maybe it's going to Berlin. That can be a very adventurous city, as we'll see tonight. Unique destinations, um, touch on a few of those tonight with Germany. Custom itineraries, this works out really well for folks because I like to do... Um, a plan for you where maybe you want to go to Germany for two weeks and check out the, uh, you know, family tree or some sites that are significant to you. We're going to look at a self-drive tonight on the Romantic Road. Um, I can help prepare itineraries for that and set up your travel needs. And of course, my background comes at it. I come at it with international development in mind. So that was my background in university. So I just like to take international concepts and bring it down to um, your level and, you know, synthesize the key information and basically help you experience the best that the globe has to offer. I certainly have done that myself. I've traveled to over 40 countries on six continents. And my experience in doing uh, travel agency work and becoming a travel agency owner, um, you know, I've been doing that for over a decade. And along the way, I've served many Canadians coast to coast and a few folks from outside of Canada as well. Hello to anybody who might be listening tonight from beyond the Canadian borders. Hey, just to let you know before we get going, I have a passion for uh, languages, the English language, but also foreign language. And that includes German. You'll get to hear me tonight speaking some German. And maybe I'll even do my German accent for you a little later. And then, um, you know, I love culture and I love learning about the world. So, of course, for me, part of that is traveling. But it could also mean enjoying food from around the world, drink from around the world, uh, customs from around the world, meeting people from around the world, all that good stuff. All right. So enough about me. Let's get going uh, with tonight's presentation. But before we do, if you have any questions, I'm unable to answer a question during the express uh, format for Travel Talks. So I just invite you to um, send me a question by email. Um, you can fill out a question form on my website, Destination Whatever. So if you're watching this uh, presentation after you're watching the recording, just pop on over there if you have any questions. I like to do it this way because then I can give you a personalized response. I can include any links, attachments, relevant uh, pieces of information, that sort of thing. So hold on to those questions and send them on in. I will get back to you with a personalized response. 
If you want to ask me questions face to face, I propose a Zoom. I do complimentary Zoom, uh, 30 minute Zoom sessions. This is great as well, especially if we have a few folks in different parts of the area or different parts of the country, I should say. Um, or maybe we just want to do it face to face and put some things on screen share. Whatever you need, I can do a 30 minute complimentary Zoom. You can book that in on my website. All right, let's get going with tonight's destination. Uh, let's begin by talking about Germany in the very basic sense. We need to understand where Germany is located in the world. And so it is a European country, and specifically German is a central European country. And it is surrounded by many other European countries. If we start looking at Germany, say this is a clock and we start at 12 o'clock, that would be the north and that's Denmark. There's a small land border that connects Germany with land uh, with Denmark. And then if we move around in a clockwise fashion, in other words, if I pop over first to the east, uh, the first country we border is Poland. And then next we have Czech Republic or Czechia. And then as we get towards the south, we can find the borders of Austria and Switzerland. These countries form the Alpine areas that we'll be looking at tonight. There's also a waterway there, uh, uh, Lake Constance. And then we come up the, well, I guess it would be the western side here, and then we would uh, be along the Rhine. We'll be taking a lot of looks at the Rhine tonight. Um, well, anyway, that would bring us with the borders of France and Luxembourg and Belgium and Netherlands. So quite a few countries that can be found on that side. I talk about Germany's waterways. Well, to the northwest, we would have the North Sea. And we'll be looking at that tonight when we look at the town or the resort community, I should say, of Zilt. And then on the other side, I'm talking about the Northeast, we have the Baltics. And so the Baltic Sea can be found. There's ferries that go from this part of Germany over to Scandinavia. So that's where you're gonna find Germany. I like Germany when I'm talking about Europe because it's right in the middle. It is centralized. Now, this is just another quick map of Germany, looking at it from a political view or looking at its main cities. We can also see some waterways. We're going to look at those waterways tonight. We're going to look at the Elbe. We're going to look at the Danube. We're going to look at the Rhine. And there are some major cities that show up. So the pin is in Berlin because Berlin is the capital city of Germany. And then we can see other major spots like Hamburg. That's a major port town. That's going to come up tonight when we look at our expedition cruise for Germany. And then if we look at other major cities, Frankfurt am Main, uh, that's a major city. If you're flying, Frankfurt Airport is mega important for connections, especially with Air Canada Star Alliance. We have Munich located down in the south. That's your gateway to the Bavarian regions. Stuttgart, famous for fast cars. And then, of course, um, there's more cities as well. Uh, we'll look at lots of them today. And, of course, not just the cities. We're going to be getting into some of the small towns and regions of Germany as well bit of fact about Germany in terms of statistics, it is the seventh largest country in Europe. So it's not the biggest, not the smallest. Its capital city of Berlin has a population of 3.7 million, and the total population of Germany is around 83 million people. The language spoken is German, of course, we would assume that, but there are regional dialects. And if you're a German speaker or a German student, uh, for example, of the language, you might find regional variants if you go to the north versus the south. I'm sure a German speaker would tell me there's a lot of dialects out there. Uh, Germany is the ninth most popular tourist country in the world. People love going to Germany. People love visiting Germany from all over the world. I serve Canadians as I am Canadian based. And so a lot of Canadians like to go to Germany because it's classic European landscape. They're inspired by the heritage. Um, if it's their own heritage or just the heritage that Germany plays in the European uh, universe. People also love to experience Germany because it's a four season destination, as we'll see coming up. There's lots that you can see and do at any time of the year. Um, you know, it attracts 11 million visitors per year. And in terms of spending, it's 19 percent of um, the Western European spending is in Germany. So Germany has some great tourism statistics. It's a viable destination. It's easy to do. Lots of people are doing it. And you can, too. 
You're going to need some money when you get over to Germany. So the currency is the euro. Super convenient if you're visiting other countries that use the euro. If you're going to go buy some euros, the rate today, I got uh, one Canadian dollar would get me 69 euro cents. And so another way you can pay for things in Europe is with credit card. That's quite common throughout. And a lot of places have the tap payment if you're using that with your smartphone. There's a lot of ATMs that are available if you'd like to withdraw cash. Um, you know, that's definitely not a problem in Europe. And electricity, another important thing, of course, you're going to want to keep your iPhone or your Samsung charged. You're going to want to take lots of pictures and charge your electronics. You're going to need to bring a converter. And uh, hair dryers can be particularly problematic, of course, for visitors to Europe. So look for hotels with hair dryers because they can definitely be hellacious on the electricity. You don't want any problems there. It's the same converter throughout European countries. So that's great if you're doing a multi-country. In terms of getting there, you've got lots of choices to get to Germany, particularly out of Canada, because Air Canada and Star Alliance offer a joint venture. They are aligned in the Star Alliance. And so you can fly from Canadian gateways coast to coast to major hub cities like Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto, Montreal, Ottawa, Halifax, all these places have nonstop flights to Germany. And then once you get to Germany, you can tune in with the Lufthansa network. So all sorts of flights that you can do. Um, and again, Frankfurt and Munich are the most common cities, but sometimes we do find transatlantic flights that go into Berlin. So that's worth keeping an eye out, especially with their new airport. And then again, some travelers, they're flying into another part of Europe and then making their way into Germany. We'll look at trains in the next slide. I do want to acknowledge Condor Airlines and Eurowings because they're popping into a lot of Canadian cities. We're finding them with uh, seasonal services. They even go into Whitehorse, which is kind of crazy. Um, and this is a European airline that you can definitely book with and be assured it is part of the Lufthansa family. And so it's a great way to get over to uh, Europe using Condor Airlines and Eurowings. In terms of the entry requirements for this region, the um, country is in the Schengen area, so that means that it's going to be uh, an entry of up to 90 days on a Canadian passport, and that's within a 180-day period. So at maximum, you could achieve two 90-day visits in Europe or the Schengen area per year. You need to have at least six months validity on your passport beyond your travel date. So if your passport's soon to expiring or it's about to be expiring, you're going to really want to make a look at that six month mark. Um, and thing that's been talked about a lot, it hasn't come through yet. It's projected for May of 2025, but it's the European Travel Information and Authorization System. And this will be an online form that travelers will complete. There will be a small fee attached to that. And the expected outcome is that you'll receive a QR code that will allow you entry across the European border. So um, when that comes up, there'll be lots of information in the news. Of course, anybody booking with me uh, will make sure that you uh, you have the links and you know what to do to get yourself set up. For the latest in travel information, I always like to direct people to travel.c, pardon me, travel.gc.ca, uh, which is the government of Canada's uh, website, and they have information that you can pull down in the drop down menu for countries all over the world, and you can find exit and entry requirements, health matters, and other diplomatic pieces of information. Just in terms of borders, I wanted to show this one. This is actually, we'd be standing in Holland looking into Germany, that house with the orange roof in the background. That's over in Germany. But this is the border in uh, Winterswijk, if I'm saying that correctly, the Netherlands, and looking over to Germany. So it just shows that uh, some of the borders uh, in the Schengen zone, you know, it is quite porous. Uh, many Canadians compare it uh, to going from province to province. You just drive across and see a sign saying, hey, welcome here, um, without having to pass through stops and, and, and make the formal customs inspection. In terms of getting around uh, part one, uh, let's look at the roads. I wanted to drive on Germany or German highways the very first time I went to Germany because I had heard about the Autobahn and that sounded really cool to me. Germany's transportation infrastructure is fantastic. They have wonderful roads. They have big roads like the Autobahn and then they have uh, secondary roads and smaller roads. And so you can really use roads to explore all corners of Germany. You could drive here, there and everywhere. 
And another thing to point out is that driving is pretty straightforward. I would even say no nonsense driving. Uh, People coming from North American may find that the fuel price is higher in Europe. It certainly is. And they also may find that manual transmission is more common. And so if you are unable to drive a manual or maybe you prefer a manual, but if you're booking a car, again, especially if you're working with someone like me as a travel agent, I want to know, do you want manual? Do you want automatic? What do you prefer? But yeah, getting a car can be a great way to explore uh, Germany. And especially if you want to get out to some nooks and crannies and some spots that uh, maybe are a little bit lesser served by rail or that you just want to visit on your own timeline. Now, of course, the rail in Germany is definitely worth considering. It's an extensive network as well, and it can more or less get you anywhere. Um, if you're in a German town and you want to find a train station, the German word for that would be a Bahnhof. Or if it's a big train station like the one in Berlin, Hauptbahnhof. And you can see those abbreviated BF and HBF, respectfully. Um, and another thing I can help you with as a travel agent is to get a rail pass. And those are available for visitors. So you need to have a Canadian or an American passport to get one. And they're available in different durations, ranging from three days up to 15 days. And they're also available in a continuous or a flexible way, which means a continuous three-day pass would be that you activate it and it's essentially going to be for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or a three-day flexi pass would be uh, having the ability to use three days flexibly within a certain period of time. So, uh, of course, we want to make sure we know what sort of travel pass you're looking for in terms of days, uh, the flexibility of those days, and then also, is it a German-only pass? Uh, meaning just for Germany, or are we going to need something multi-country? Will you be doing Germany and Poland, for example, Germany and Austria, Germany, Austria, Switzerland? There's these different combinations that we can do. So there's quite a number of options, but essentially um, connect with me if you need pricing and uh, availability on those passes. You can look those up. They're often available um, instantly, um, so we can get you set up quite soon to departure. But if you like to book in advance or you like to prepare or just know what the costs are so that you can work that into your planning, you can feel free to let me know. That would be a great way to use the question section on my website. Now let's talk about the regions of Germany. I've made a color-coded system, but essentially if you want to follow along with me, we're going to start in the north in the green area, and that's northern Germany. And then if we work in a clockwise fashion, we're going to go over to eastern Germany. And then towards the south, we're going to see southern Germany. This takes us into the Bavarian areas. And then we go up to the western area. That's that lime green. And then in the purple, um, that would be central Germany. So here we have Frankfurt. And so basically, there's five regions that would be bigger regions. And then, of course, they can chunk down into smaller regions within um. Germany, if you want to just explore one area, I think that would be a great idea. And maybe think about each area could hold your attention for up to one week. You could easily plan a month in Germany exploring just these regions. Okay, I'm so water-minded that I'm like all about talking about the water lately. I need to go on a cruise, I think it's a sign. But look, I want to talk to you about Germany's waterways because it's important to know Germany's waterways if you want to consider a river cruise, for example. Um, if you're here tonight for information on river cruising, this is the part where you're going to want to perk your ears up for a little bit. So let's take a look at those riverways. Let's start off with the pink arrows in the north up by the border with the Netherlands. That would be the start of the Rhine as far as, you know, the German parts. And then that goes all the way down to the pink arrow at the bottom. And the pink arrow at the bottom shows us uh, at the end point of the Rhine is around Basel. The capital is Switzerland. Uh, and um, that forms as well the border between France and Germany for parts of the southwest. And then if you look at the blue arrow to the other blue arrow, and I recognize that's blue on blue, but in the bottom, so the Southern River, that's the Danube River. And so that's gonna start in the Black Forest and it's gonna run all the way, eventually getting all the way to Romania, eventually going to the Black Sea, but as far as Germany goes to the Austrian border. And then the green arrows, they're gonna show us another river called the Elba. And that actually starts 
outside of Germany, but if we look at it from a German perspective in the south, it starts just south of Dresden, and it goes up close to Berlin and discharges in ha um, by Hamburg, discharges to the North Sea. And another waterway I'm going to talk about tonight is the Yellow Arrows, and you can see those are quite close because it's a smaller uh, length of water, and it's the Kiel Canal, and so it's a way for ships to pass through, and again, uh, our one of our products tonight, we'll look at the Kiel Canal. Hey, this is a cute little, uh, it's like a tea towel I got from a friend, a German friend of the Romantische Rhine, the Romantic Rhine, all the towns that you can see on the Rhine, and just also a picture of river cruising. So it's a splendid way to travel. It's getting more and more popular by the moment, especially for Canadians who are looking to go to Europe and be able to check into your river cruise, have your accommodations for one week, float from place to place, have some excellent services. I'm going to give you some ideas at the end of tonight's presentation about what river cruising would look like. But a few tips on the river cruise uh, is that you got to find the right brand. There are so many operators out there and they all have their own vibe, style and level of inclusions. And I think as well, if you're a solo traveler, um, a single traveler, in other words, um, you might want to inquire about brands that specifically have solo cabins. If not, you can oftentimes be faced with a single supplement that's twice the price. And that is something that a lot of solo travelers want to avoid. So there are definitely options out there. They can be shortlisted and sent to you. And I would say consider the Rhine and the Danube for first timers. Often people ask me, what is the first uh, river we should do? Where do we start with river cruising? Well, the Rhine and the Danube are the top choices for different reasons. Uh, the Rhine passes through a lot of classic European scenery. You know, it will start often in Amsterdam. It goes down to Switzerland. So along the way, not only can you see Germany, but it's possible to see the entire real Benelux region. So Belgium and Luxembourg and the Netherlands. Um, you can see parts of France. You can see parts of Switzerland. Danube's really popular. Just goes through that really picture perfect um, scenery uh, that we like. Mountains, green hills, Julie Andrews, sound of music. Hey, Germany is a four season destination. It's important to let you know that. Um, there, uh, that said, uh, there are trends that are happening, especially after the last few years. We see a lot of European heat waves, a lot of uncomfortable travelers going over there in the summer, a lot of crowd. Um, so for many folks, they're starting to think, I want to go to Europe in the spring. I want to go to Europe in the fall. There's a number of reasons for that. Um, winter is also really popular. If you want to go skiing or do the Christmas markets, obviously that's going to be in winter. Let's start talking about a few things that you can see and do in Germany. Let's talk about the cultural highlight uh, highlights, I should say. So Germany's cultural tapestries uh, have a lot of iconic landmarks, and we're going to take a look at a few of those right now, but definitely showcases that Germany has a rich heritage. So here's the Cologne Cathedral and the famous bridge in Cologne. This is a place that people love to take pictures of when they're in Cologne. You can also walk along the bridge and lovers uh, lock locks on the bridge. It was recently shown on at the most recent season of Amazing Race. Over in Berlin, here's the Brandenburg Gate where history literally has happened. Um, and you can go there and you can walk through the archways. Uh, the last time I was in Berlin was for Pride, St. Christopher's Day, and then the party scene here was happening from here all the way down to the Gold Tower, the Siegelstor. Checkpoint Charlie, I love language, so here you can see a couple different languages, but this shows that, you know, Berlin used to be a city divided. There's history there that's so close we can almost reach out and touch it. Outside of Berlin is the Sanssouci Palace. This is a beautiful palace that's done in the Rococo style. The Reichstag building, the capital of Germany, as a reminder, Berlin is the capital city of uh, Germany. Dem Deutschen Volke. I hope they use the right pronoun there. Anybody who studied Germany, German knows that uh, the pronouns can be frustrating. 
Another thing is the Romantische Strasse or the Romance Road. Uh, this has been around for quite a while, ever since really um, people started doing motoring, traveling by rental car, going to ger see Germans, uh, Germany's sites uh, by car. And it's a great option for folks that are coming and going from Frankfurt Airport because it starts up that way and it brings you down towards the um, down towards the mountains. Just romantic scenery like this. Romantic towns like this, Rothenburg, Obdatalba. And I was recently reading uh, in National Geographic on their website about this being one of the most recommended things to do in Europe at the moment, getting a car and driving the romantic road. All right, museums and art galleries, there's a lot of those, tons of masterpieces, everything from the classics right up through to the modern and you can find it all in Germany. So the Kunstpalace in Dusseldorf, the Pinata, sorry, my German is getting tricky, uh, Pinakothek de Modern in Munich, the Berlin Museum Island, obviously in Berlin. If you like fast cars, why not the Porsche Museum in Stuttgart? Of course, when we think about Germany as well, we have to think about festivals and special moments. Uh, there is just so many things on offer in Germany and some of them that really stand out. Oktoberfest. Of course, this picture, whether you love it or hate it, symbolizes a lot of what many of us think about when it comes to Germany and it comes to the tourism of Germany. We want pretzels and we want beer and we want to see the traditional outfits for men and for women. This would be a beer hall that would be located, um, that would be happening during Oktoberfest. And one thing as well to point out, uh, Oktoberfest, many North Americans tell me, oh, I want to go to Oktoberfest in October. Wrong. It's in September. So just make sure that you back it up a month. Another popular time of year that's recently just happened for 2024 is Carnival. Christmas markets, one of the most sensational things. I get so many requests for Christmas markets. These would be some pictures of some Christmas markets. Uh, people right now are booking the 2024 Christmas markets and even looking at 2025, planning well in advance, especially if you need one of those single supplement cabins. Uh, these are the Lebkuchen with messages of love and Yuletide greetings. Stars and more stars and Christmas decorations, and snow. And this lovely picture that's finished kind of in a bokeh way with the blurred lights showing us blue and gold, and you can feel the warmth in here and just try to imagine the smell, the glue vine and the spices and all the warm things that you can eat as you wander from stall to stall shopping for Christmas treasures and decorations. Wow, that looks really cool. Right in the city, Christmas markets. All right. Whoops, sorry, but folks, we need to skip ahead now and look at German food and drink, and we're just about to wind up in the next couple of minutes. Uh, in Germany, three meals a day is common, so we're going to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Let's take a look at some common foods that you can find in Germany. Currywurst, served with sauce and french fries. This might be popular, especially in Berlin, where you could enjoy it at an imbiss. That's a way to grab, that's a place to grab quick bites in Germany, quick food on the go. How about a Black Forest cake, a Schwarzwalder Kirschtorte? One I think is really funny, spaghetti ice. So this is ice cream that's made to look like spaghetti. It's a vanilla ice cream that's pressed with a raspberry sauce and uh, garnished with crushed almonds to represent the Parmesan cheese. So it's not Italian food, it's German. It's a spaghetti ice. Of course, bratwurst with mustard. Here's another one with another type of mustard and a sauerkraut in the bun. And a kartoffel salat, a potato salad. That's another classic food of Germany. But we really have to include a picture of beer and pretzels so Prost is the German word for cheers, and I just love a pretzel like that, made in the traditional way with all those crunchy, salty finishings on that. Nom, 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 nom. Oh, shoot, we've got a little issue with the image here. This would just be to show you Germany has extensive wine areas as well. 
Riesling, Gewürztramina, ice wine, all sorts of things, especially towards the French border. Now, as we wind down, let's take a look at just uh, some quick product here. I want to show you some great ideas for traveling in Germany and some ideas you might not have thought about. This would be an expedition cruise that goes in and out of Dover, which is in United Kingdom, easy to get to because you're just going to need to get that flight to London. But why does it relate to Germany? Well, it's because first we start off with a visit to Sylt with its 25 miles of pristine dunes, beaches, and hearthland. Sylt is a beach lover's paradise. These beach boxes that you see in the picture with the blue and white tapestry, uh, those have a great historical connection. People used to rent those. Of course, they could um, take protection from the sun and the elements when they rode on the beach with their little cabins. But truly a nature lover's paradise, especially if you love beachy coastal vibes. There's only one sailing of this, folks. It's July 13th to 27th, 2024. It includes all activities, meals, wine and beer during lunch and supper. There's a science center. There's an onboard photographer, lectures, a Halle Hansen jacket for you keep. So many things. Email me. I can send you the full list. It's starting at 5110 US per person. Right now it's $1,000 off per person based on double occupancy. And that's for bookings made in February. Again, this... Uh, it has two connections to Germany because it sails through the Kiel Canal, which I think is a really neat opportunity, especially for anybody that likes engineering, unique transportation, things like that. This is a very, very busy canal that goes back to 1887. Ships can use it to bypass Denmark's uh, peninsula. And so you can go through here, through the locks, the Schlüssen. And I think uh, for somebody that loves Germany, loves transportation, this is a must. Christmas markets, really hot, really popular. Right now, there's Christmas markets on sale to the end of the week with G Adventures. This is what they do. It goes from Berlin to Vienna, but they also operate it in the reverse, so both directions can be done. I have the dates here for you. This can be secured for a $350 per person deposit. So if you just want to book your spot on a Christmas uh, market right now, let's do it. We have until Friday to take advantage of the sale prices on that. Obviously, you all know what Christmas looks like, but I just want to make sure you're aware of the great promotional opportunity on this one. If you like a self-guided holiday, there's a lot of options. This is one called Walking Bavaria's Lakes and Mountains. So this would be walking in the southern area. This is available uh, for starting as low as $22.35 Canadian per person. And what's great about a self-guided walking holiday is that it's available for travelers ages 13 and up. So if you want to do something with the teenagers, that's possible on this trip. And so you're going to have your bags moved from place to place. You're going to have your accommodations booked. You're going to have all your tour notes. There's kind of like a guide in the background if you get into any jams, but essentially it's self-guided. So another great thing about these trips is they can be set up more or less on any date. So if you have very particular needs or maybe you're just not looking to join a group tour this time around, self-guided walking holidays can offer a lot of attractive benefits. All right, I want to show you two river cruises to wind down with a French operator called Crossa Europe. There's a great price point with Crossa Europe. It's a French-based company, so they do great French food. There is beer and wine included with uh, your meals. They have Wi-Fi included. Did I mention they were French with really good refined French food? This is a nine-day itinerary um, that goes from Prague to Berlin or back again. Um, so you'd be traveling on the Elba River and just checking out some amazing sites, uh, the Elba Sandstone Mountains, uh, the city of Dresden, which is called the Florence of the Elba, uh, Mason, if I'm saying this correctly, with its porcelain, and Lutherstadt Wittenberg, which was the birthplace of the Reformation. So some great history here. Across Europe, great company for somebody looking to do some river cruise, maybe not looking for over-the-top service, but still wanting to keep it comfortable. Let's talk about Cross Eye Europe. Here's another one that they do. It's called Four Rivers, the Neca, Romantic Rhine, Moselle, and Saar Valley. So if the idea of the Romantic Rhine from a few slides ago appealed to you, check this one out. It starts in Strasbourg and ends in Luxembourg. It's a seven-day itinerary starting off at $21.92 US per person. Great prices on these ones. They are in US dollar, but still very, very competitively priced. And they're so inclusive with the meals, the Wi-Fi, 
the wine and beer during lunch and supper, and also the Wi-Fi, all that great French service. This would be a wonderful river cruise opportunity for somebody wanting to river cruise, wanting to experience a bit of the Rhine. We know it's a popular uh, waterway for river cruisers, but also wanting that difference, wanting that whatever, wanting to see a few different waterways that are here and there on the side. Like I said, four rivers. All right, folks, we're going to pull this train to the station. If you missed tonight's talk, there's a recording on Zoom. But if you're here in live, you're like wondering, what about other recorded talks? I got a whole bunch of them on my website. So you can just circle on over to destinationwhatever.com and check out the library of travel education that I have at your fingertips. I have some upcoming travel talks that I wanted to let you know about. There are five of them coming up in the next couple of weeks. It's busy, busy, busy. The times are available on my website. I've put them in the different time zones so you can check it out based on where you're tuning in from. But take a note of these days. On February 15th, we'll be speaking about the Galapagos Islands. I'll be interviewing a recent retiree who took her retirement trip and went to the Galapagos. So she'll be speaking to us about her expedition cruise, uh, what that was like and what she got to see on the islands out in Galapagos. On February 19th, I'm going to be talking about Australia. We've been seeing tremendous interest in Australia. And then on March 4th, we're going to talk about a place that's been getting tremendous interest domestically, Newfoundland and Labrador, getting a lot of requests for uh, a discussion on that province and what you can see and do there. I've got some wonderful ideas that include touring on land, touring on water, and touring that includes Newfoundland and Labrador, so we can look at both the island and the more northern part of Labrador. On March 13th, I'll be speaking about the Amazon jungle. Most of you may know I went wild this summer on a one-week Amazon river cruise. It was thrilling. It was a learning opportunity. It was sensational. So I'm going to unpackage that on March 13th. And then on March 25th, uh, 25th uh, we'll be going to the Netherlands. So not too, too far from Germany, but totally different. And on this travel presentation, it will be 30 minutes on the Netherlands. Of course, we'll start in Amsterdam. But my goal is to take you outside of Amsterdam and show you that there are more dimensions to the Netherlands and more things that you can see and do in the Netherlands than maybe you thought about. So 30 minute presentation there on the Netherlands. You can get all those details on my website. If you need to contact me, you can call in on my website. It's destinationwhatever.com. And if you're a social media user, you can find me on Facebook and on Instagram. Hey, just a few final promotions to let you know about the G Adventure sale. Like I said, that wraps up on February 9th. If that Christmas market spoke to you or one of their other itineraries speaks to you, please get in touch with me so we can get you confirmed on that one and get you one of the, uh, you know, this is one of the best sales of the year. So let's take advantage of that, folks, and get your 2024 happening. Um, another similar operator in Trapid Travel is having a flash sale of up to 20% off. Uh, we got to act really quickly because this one ends on September 7th, here's a picture of me on my food tour in northern Spain. That was just an amazing trip that I did with Intrepid. Got lots of experience with them and again can offer you immediate service, booking confirmation, that sort of thing. That's me, folks, on Destination Whatever, custom itinerary, small group tours, adventure travel, cruising. I am your number one travel agency. And as I fin a travel agent, travel agency, all of those things. And as I wind down tonight, I'm going to show a picture of me in Germany, our host destination tonight. This is me at Jasmund National Park on Rügen Island. Rügen Island is my favorite part of Germany. It is an island located on the northeastern side of Germany. And I just love it for the nature. I love the laid back vibes. I love the spas, the Badhose. And I love walking in nature. And there's certainly plenty of that that can be done in Rügen Island. So for me, it's a total happy place. All right, folks, that's it for me tonight. Dave Wentworth with Destination Whatever. If you need to reach out, there's my website. And you can come on by destinationwhatever.com to make a connection with me, ask your questions, get started planning your trip because I am a number one travel expert. As they say in German, Auf Wiedersehen, that means goodbye. And I look forward to seeing you at the next opportunity. Come to one of my upcoming travel talks and make sure to tell a friend. Good night.